Hello, I am Jose Pupin de Oliveira, an MIT UTM Visiting Scholar. This video shares some lessons of my research on urban innovation using case of waste management in Penang, Malaysia. Urban innovation means doing things differently in the urban context. Innovation is important for improving urban services in a context where many cities around the world face increasing budgetary constraints. Interaction among different governmental and non-governmental actors are key to innovation. Interactions can bring new resources and knowledge to solve urban problems more effectively. The waste sector in Malaysia particularly offers an interesting laboratory for urban innovations. The country has tried to improve waste management effectiveness in recent years, making a series of institutional change, such as the centralization of waste management at the federal level. Previously, the waste management and public cleansing is under the purview of the, each state government and uh, being implemented uh, or being responsible is under the local government. Somehow they have a difficulty to provide sufficient fund to manage. At the same time, do not have uh, expertise or manpower to manage the solid waste. In previously, almost all the waste is sent to the dumping ground. The local government are asking federal government to provide the fund for them. We also want the local government to focus on other areas of services. Eh? So that's the reason why the federal thinks it's better so that the, the responsibility of managing the waste is put under federal responsibility. Penang Island in Malaysia decided to keep waste management under local control. Actually, the Urban Services Department is in charge of solid waste management and also public cleansing is the core business of the council. The most uh, challenges part in Penang Island is uh, domestic waste. Penang Island concerns around 550 tonnes of waste is being Dispose. The city council spends about 40% of its budget just to dispose of waste. Our recycling rate at the moment is 27% with the active role of the recycling agent, the NGOs and the environmental group. In 1998, the domestic waste around 700 ton. Now it's, only, it's around 540 ton per day. So how we managed to reduce it? In Penang, we had a very quite active role of the stakeholders doing recycling. Urban innovations reduce the waste. We are going to see two of those initiatives to understand how urban innovations emerge through different kinds of institutional arrangements. This is a recycling education center. More important is the education to spread and to actually encouraging more people start to do recycling together. And in Malaysia, is a lot of time uh, the recycling sorting is not part of the life whole uh, practices yet. So we have to set up the proper infrastructure to teach the resident how recycling uh, to be done, so that when they go back home, they know how to actually save the item into the different category. So we had about 20 who are all volunteers. Uh, in average, per month, uh, we are running about 10, about 10 tons of material. That cover plastic, papers, metals. All proceed from the recycling are all channeled towards the dialysis center. For this Shichi dialysis center, actually, we started in 1997. From the first day, it's actually free of charge. Everyone interested to know how we survived for the past 18 years. About 70% come from donation from the public. Another nearly 30% are come from our recycling. Recycling education center is something very new. When they equate recycling center equal to rubbish center. So when we want to set up this center, the resident community say, no, we cannot allow a rubbish center set up. Then we have to explain to them, we are not setting up a rubbish center. We are setting up an education center. No smell, right, and it's clean. And that is a mosquito infested area. Suchi was willing to come here to set it up. So we work along with them. We actually uh, work out with the, uh, the MBPP, the, the, the council. They, they do actually facilitate, they actually rent to us at a very minimum uh, rental cost. It's also, they are very supportive of our recycling effort. 
And at the same time, by doing recycling, we also reduce the amount of rubbish that they had to handle. The whole country go for solid waste recycling. So we are actually three years ahead. Go green, save life. From the recycling, besides we are doing environmental protection, we actually can save life. So in terms of waste management, uh, it is not the right way to just like think of disposal. We should try to reduce the consumption so that we will also reduce um, a production of waste. We are trying to promote uh, communities to be involved. From the community, it goes to the local government. At least 45% to 50% is organic waste or food waste. Yeah? How in the first place can you reduce food waste, kitchen peelings or the green waste which can go into composting? Composting is the second case of urban innovation in which the private sector partners with the public sector and civil society. Most of the problem is that uh, people expect the government to handle their waste. Waste is not their problem, it's government's problem. How people look at food waste, because to them it is a waste. Uh, but to the world, it is actually a resource. Most uh, recycling companies don't survive for long because the cost is too high to do recycling. Uh, and the economic returns or the value is too low. Uh, the only way for them to make money is of course then to, uh, looking at government subsidies, uh, looking at government credit mechanisms. We have come up with something that we know that is uh, economically feasible. Lepas di, diproses daripada mesin, sisa sisa makanan akan dimasuk ke dalam tung yang disediakan. Inilah tung yang disediakan. Methodist Boys School, a uh, few years back, we were approached by one of our old boys who is also happened to be a counsellor in the uh, city council in Penang. So he came up with the idea of uh, turning the school green. All canteen waste especially food waste, churned up in the machine and converted into enzymes which later will be converted into fertilizer and that fertilizer will be brought to our eco green farm. We have a daily schedule for Monday to Friday for all these food, we have to collect the food waste from the canteen just to be processed here. We have uh, the fruit section, we also have the herbal section kitchen remedies. Over the other side, you will find that we have this rainwater harvesting system. So this is um, some collaboration with USM, University of Science Malaysia. At Penang Hill, we deal with the end product uh, differently. We ferment the food waste uh, here itself without taking back to the factories. And then we use the fermented food waste to treat sewage. And the grease tap has got no smell and no oil accumulation, no grease accumulation. If you ask me, I think a lot of things work better on a small scale than on a large scale. Everybody has to cooperate. You can develop the best machines in the world, but if the people don't cooperate, it's not, the machine is not going to run by itself. Food waste doesn't get separated by itself. You need people. Everybody has to chip in somewhere. And this is where we are going on with the schools to start teaching the students uh, the importance of actually separating your food waste and making sure that they are going to the correct places. Three main lessons from the case. First, innovation capabilities were created by involving various stakeholders. Second, broad stakeholder involvement brought resources like knowledge and finance from various sources. This would not be possible if a stakeholder was working alone. Third, innovations were able to connect waste with other issues such as health, sewage treatment and education. Innovation can overcome problems of collective action where many stakeholders must work together. There should be uh, awareness amongst the communities yeah, on how to reduce the waste and also in terms of the industry. So there are a lot of uh, players in the field of uh, waste management which everyone has to take part in. The state and local authorities have helped to scale up such initiatives by providing support to coordinate the different efforts from federal government, civil society, and linking them with citizens. We still feel that there is something to be done more. We have already come up to the policy in line with the federal uh, policy to come up with the mechanism of collections. We are not going to use the same mechanism as federal what they are doing. 
we are going to improvise this according to our own local environment. A combination of top-down efforts from governments to support niches of bottom-up urban innovation brings the right combination to nurture broad transformation in urban service delivery. The way you're disposing it, whether you're landfilling or you're incinerating or you're just dumping, is all causing problems for the climate too because of the greenhouse gas emissions. How can we make a city suitable for our bodies and our health? We've designed and managed cities often in the interests of motor cars rather than in the interests of people. We need to uh, rethink the city in the interests of people. Even though there is some initiative being done, but still the mindset still needs to be changed. The, the current concept of development is the more buildings they have, the more industries they have, the more developed you are, the better you will become. But uh, they have not factored in actually the cost in terms of pollution, in terms of traffic congestion. Creating the capabilities to innovate in governments and civil society is crucial to combating global problems such as climate change, which requires a higher degree of collective action to design and manage the cities of the future. This will require innovation in our thinking about how we carry out urban development.